Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're sketching and painting a sleeping panda. I'm keeping my supplies really basic today. All I have is my Paul Rubens watercolor journal. It is important that you use cotton paper if you want to get the same effects that we're going for today. Make sure you have a water jar, some paper towel for blotting, and one round brush is really all you need. I'm using my Trakel size 8 round brush, and I'm using my Winsor Newton Cotman watercolor set. These are student grade paints, so they're really affordable, but they're actually really great quality for what you pay for them. So I love to travel with the set and it's great for watercolor journaling. All right, so we're going to start with the sketch. We're going to break this down into simple shapes. We want our panda's head to be in the center of the composition, but his little arm comes out about as far as his body. Let's put his head right in the middle and you can start with just a simple circle shape if you want just to see how big it is and where the placement is. And then for his little body, it extends about the same width as his head. Maybe a little, yeah, it's about the same width. Something like that, and then the arm coming down. Rough shapes for now, and sketch really lightly so that you can erase your marks later. And then this arm is gonna come just about all the way to the edge of my paper. And when you're looking at the reference photo, you can see that the two paws are about the same, on the same plane. Try not to make one hang lower than the other, they're about the same. All right, so once you've got the rough placement for the head and the two arms, then you can start adding a little more detail and just tightening up your drawing. So let's start with the head. I'm just gonna make sure that the edge is where I want it to be. I'm gonna sketch a little darker now that I'm more confident with where everything is going. Even if you're still not very comfortable with sketching and drawing, I definitely encourage you to give it a try. Drawing is the foundation for all art. Keep practicing it daily, it will get easier. Let's tighten up this little arm over here. You can add a couple little bits of fur where his claws are. And then the ears actually come a little lower than the white fur that's on his back right here. So you can start with the fur on the back and then draw his ears inset just a little lower than that. Think about making them the same size or roughly the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And then for the center of the face, the nose is about a third of the way up. So if you divide his head from where the top between his ears is into thirds, the nose is about right there. And his head is slightly turning this way, so it's not gonna be exactly in the center of his face. And then draw his little smile. Note how close to his nose the black marking around his eye is. And check the distance between the ear and the black marking. These are all ways to just check yourself and make sure that your drawing is accurate. We're always measuring one thing next to another. Trying to build our drawing uh, based on former good decisions. <laughs> and sometimes you have to erase and start over, but that's okay. So there's his little face. And then his arm just comes right close to his ear, right about there. You can draw a little fur texture along the edge if you wish. But most of that we will end up doing with paint. And then I'm realizing that the lower part of his arm actually comes right next to the black spot on his eye. So I actually sketched that a little too low. I'm gonna make that adjustment, pull that up higher, and I'll have to adjust his leg as well. And we'll erase our wrong marking. So you can see, even with lots of practice, you may end up still needing to use your eraser sometimes. That's totally okay. So let's finish up this little foot over here. And then we can dive into the fun part, into the painting. So again, if you had any lines that were just off, you can go ahead and erase those. You can draw the separation between his toes. A couple little claws. And then we'll have the white fur of his body back here, draped over this rock. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for our sketch. We're ready to start painting. All right, start with clean water and swirl your brush in the water and then remove any excess on the side of your jar. We're actually going to paint the background first and this will help set the tone for the rest of the painting. Okay, so we're gonna do wet and wet for the background and if you applied tape to your journal like I did, you should have nice preserved borders. So you can use your water and paint right up to that tape. Where you'll want to be careful is just around the white fur of the panda. So use the tip of your brush to draw with the water, just avoiding the inside of our pencil lines. We're painting all around that, just the background here. This is where having cotton watercolor paper is gonna be so important. If you want your paint to disperse smoothly and evenly and for your paper to hold up with all of these layers of paint, 
cotton watercolor paper just works the best. But if not, that's okay, make it work. All right, so you should have a nice glossy, wet surface. Let's grab some green. I'm gonna take this kind of a sap green color right here, swirl it around in my palette with some water so I can just see how thick the paint is, how pigmented, and we're just gonna blot that in in the background, painting it right up to the panda. And right up to the stone or this big rock that's behind him. So you can fill in the entire background with a single color, or you can drop in more colors over the top. And I think that's what I'm gonna do because I think it adds a lovely variety when you do some wet and wet colors in the background. And it'll almost look like the blurred out background from a photograph. So once you've painted in the entire background, it doesn't have to be a smooth, perfect wash, but just paint it in that solid color. While it's still wet, you can grab some other colors if you'd like. I'm gonna take this turquoise blue right here. It's kind of this cool blue. And I'm gonna start dropping that in using a circular motion of the brush to encourage the look of soft, blurred out greenery in the background. Make sure to preserve some of the green underneath. You don't want to cover up everything that you've just painted. And so just be strategic about where you want to put this color. You can push and pull the paint a little bit while it's still wet and adjust the shapes to your heart's content. Yeah, a little more right over here. All right, so there's our background. Let's do the rock next. The rock in the reference photo is just gray. We'll do this the same way we did the background, wet and wet. So start with water. Paint all inside of the rock, spreading out the water evenly so you have a nice glossy surface. Don't let any big puddles form. If that does happen, you can just take your brush and push the water around and spread it so it's more evenly dispersed. You might have to look at it from different angles just to see how shiny it is, how wet it is. The rock we're actually gonna probably do in multiple layers, but for now, let's just get the thinnest lightest layer of gray on. If you have Payne's gray, that'll be the perfect color for this. So I'm gonna take my Payne's gray, that's this one right here. Swirl it around in the palette first so it's not too dark, not too pigmented. And I'm actually gonna avoid the top side of the rock and just start in the lower portion. Over here, the rock is actually in the light, it's catching the light. So we'll let some of that paint seep up in there but not necessarily paint over it ourselves. Underneath the bear, that's a different story that he's casting a shadow with his body draped across the rock. So you do want to paint a little bit of a shadow right under his body. Now leave some of the rock white. You want it to look kind of textured and interesting. So don't paint it all over the way we did with the background. Leave a little bit of the white of the paper showing through. But because we pre-wet the paper, it should be nice and soft. Notice how I'm leaving this portion of the rock untouched by paint. And again, that's because we want it to look like it's catching the sunlight on it. And then this part of the rock already dried out. Wow, my paper dried so fast. But I'm just gonna spread the paint all up there. Now, if you wanna add a couple little dots of color here and there in the rock to make it not look so perfectly gray, you can add in little hints of burnt sienna or whatever brown you have. I see some brown in the reference photo on the rock over here underneath this paw. So wet and wet, without too much water, notice how I'm blotting on my paper towel to control that in my brush. I'm dropping in some of that burnt sienna on the surface of the rock, just using a dabbing motion. And that's helping it look like texture. helping it look like it's a rough rock, not quite so smooth. While the paint's wet, remember, you can manipulate it a little bit. You can push and pull the shapes, make it how you'd like. And then I'm just gonna darken over here this rock, not all the way up. Again, we want it to look like the sun is shining down on the top of the rocks. And then using a little bit more Payne's Gray, I'm gonna darken even more to cast the shadow underneath this big paw. Dipping in the water when I need to go a little lighter or removing some of the extra paint on the paper towel. And then just continuing to add a little more texture. I'm not making it exactly like the photo. I'm just kind of scraping my brush across the surface of the paper 
imitating that texture of the rock. At this point, this is already dried enough that some of the paint is just kind of staying exactly where I put it, which is really cool. It gives it a good variety of texture and contrast. All right, so we may add some more to that later. We'll have to see. For now, let's dive into the bear. We're gonna start with the white fur in the bear. We'll start with a little area on his body that's kind of receding back here. And once again, I'm gonna wet the surface of the paper. Wet and wet is my favorite technique because it creates effortless soft edges for me. You do have to learn to control how much water is in your brush when you're using this technique, but after a while it becomes sort of second nature. Now I have this yellow ochre color and I'm gonna mix that a little bit on my palette and drop that into the white fur. It's a very light tinted wash, not much color there. Now let's come into his face and do the same thing. You can take your clean water and pretty much paint it all over his face. Again, letting the water soak up into the paper and then take your yellow ochre, mix it with a little bit of the Payne's Gray that's on your palette, and start to paint on the bottom side of his face where it's turning down into the shadow, this tan color, using the blotting motion of the brush. Mix up a little more if it's not quite dark enough. This area of the fur is definitely a little darker than, than it was over here a little more pigment. And remember that watercolor generally dries lighter than what you're seeing right now when it's wet. So if it looks too dark now, don't worry, it will dry lighter. Put a little of that tan under each ear. One little strip of tan along the back. All of this is white fur, so we don't wanna to go too dark with it. I'm mixing up a little bit more paints gray, and if I have too much water in my brush, I can tell I have too much water, I'm just sliding it against the palette to remove that excess water. And again, dabbing on the paper towel just for added water removal. And then dropping in that gray underneath his head again. This area is quite dark. It's very much in the shadow. And right now it looks way too dark, but that's because we haven't painted the black yet. It'll look a lot better once we paint the black. If you do accidentally go too dark too soon, while the paint is wet, you can easily just lift that paint back out with a clean, damp brush with most of the water squeezed out of it. That's called a thirsty brush. And all is not lost. All right, so his face is starting to look a little more three-dimensional just with these little hints of gray and tan in that fur. He has almost this mustache in between his nose and mouth. And now at the point of my brush, I'm adding some more specific fur coming away from his mouth, leading up to his eye. And at this point, the paper is beginning to dry. So it's really important that you don't have any extra water in your brush, but you can do some wet on damp details like this, where you're painting fur texture over the top of your wet paper, and it's gonna begin to stay put more than it was at first when it was so wet. And you can use that to continue to soften those brush strokes, but not quite so extremely like in the background. So there's different levels of drying in your paper that you can just take advantage of. All right, I think we'll leave that alone for now. Let's come back to this side of his body and instead of using the black in my palette, I'm gonna mix up my own black. I'm gonna use my blue. This is ultramarine blue. You can create a black using any of your dark primaries. So if you have a dark blue and a dark brown or a dark red, I'm mixing in ultramarine now and burnt sienna. You can create a really convincing black just by using two dark transparent colors. And what I love about mixing my own black is that I do end up with a transparent black that layers better than just the solid black, because most blacks in watercolor are made from 
coal, and so they're totally opaque. All right, so it may take quite a bit of pigment to mix up a dark enough black that you're happy with, but once you've mixed it, you can use that to paint the dark patches of fur on your panda. Now notice how I'm letting my brush miss some of that little white of the paper, suggesting white fur overlapping the black. And that's how you're gonna get him to look fuzzy. <laughs> can do the same thing on the edge of his arm here. Use the tip of your brush and paint little bits of fur along that edge. And then you can go and fill it all in with a broader sweeping motion using the belly side of your brush. You may need to mix up a little bit more if you ran out already, I ran out really fast. And then close to his head, I want it to be even darker. But as I come close to his face, again, I'm using a tiny little horizontal parallel line brush stroke to get that fuzzy edge along his face. This is the way you can paint fuzzy fur using wet and dry. Usually when I'm painting furry edges, I like to use wet and wet. If you'd like to learn more about that technique, check out this video. Okay, I'm gonna dip in the water remove some of that extra, and then paint the front of his foot just a little bit lighter. I want it to look like it's turning up towards the light, but still has black fur. And I'm gonna paint around a couple little claws, just leaving a hint of that white exposed. Mix up some more black. You can use that same combo, or if you're finding it difficult to get it dark enough with your primary colors or with your brown and black, or with your brown and blue, go ahead and use your black. There's nothing wrong with using black. It's completely a matter of preference, artist to artist. And with my darker color, going in and boosting that shadow in his arm and moving my brush in the direction I see his fur moving. So on either side of his front leg, I'm darkening and I'm leaving it a little bit brighter in the center. That's giving him some dimension and shape, helping him look 3D. And then you can darken between his little claws. And that leg is pretty much done. By now, his face is dry, so we can finish the details of his face. You'll need black again, so if you want to mix more, now is the time. And let's start with his ear. Once again, use those tiny, short, parallel brush strokes to create a furry edge, overlapping your background slightly. And then, where you have a larger space to fill in, you can use quicker, looser brush strokes. Take shortcuts wherever possible. Anywhere you have black fur meeting the white fur, use that technique to create texture. You don't want it to just look straight cut off. So here again on the ear tip, I'm painting little bits of fur. And then filling it in dark. Okay, for his eyes, just go ahead and fill in those shapes. And then we'll go over it again once these dry with a darker layer to help it really look like we can see those closed eyes. It can be tricky to see them on a panda. So we'll need a couple different values to make that stand out, not just a single value. And once again, wherever possible, try to create a furry texture, furry edges, where the dark fur meets the light fur. Okay, for the nose, I'm starting with a lighter mix of my black, so it's more of a gray. And we're going to paint a base color of that. And I'm going to try to leave a little highlight under each nostril, where those nostrils are catching the light and the sun is shining on them. It's going to help the nose look shiny. Removing any extra water and paint, and then taking some more black and outlining his mouth with a decisive shape. But again, we're using tiny parallel brush strokes to show fur. So I'm not just drawing a smile, I'm using tiny little vertical brush strokes to create that shape. And that way he has a fuzzy smile. Now I'm taking some burnt sienna reddish brown, mixing it up with the gray that's still in my brush so it produces this sort of murky brown, removing the extra water in my paper towel. And you can see now what seemed so dark at first is now too light. 
compared to the black that we just painted. So I'm going to darken up all of that shadow shape under his mouth using this brown. I'm going to dip in the water and actually do a big broad brush stroke for this whole side of his cheek. That's an easy way you can kind of take a shortcut and paint a broad section quickly. It doesn't all have to be fur texture all the time. Dipping in the water again to remove some of the paint so I have a lighter tone on my brush and going over his underside of his mouth and the right side of his face with broad, wet brush strokes. And I don't like this edge, so I'm gonna actually scrub some of that a little bit back out. And that's better. I'm gonna use a light gray across the top of his back where we get a sense of the curving of his body. These are really light tinted washes on my brush right now, just barely visible. All right, so I think we're gonna let that dry just a little bit more. And while we let that dry, we can paint his other arm. Mix up some more black. Pretty 50-50 mixture of the two colors I find produces the best tone. And then you can again start with the edge of his arm with that fur texture feathering your brush up and away in the direction that fur is sticking up from his arm, making it super soft and fuzzy. And then use the belly side of the brush to connect that all into the broader shape of his arm. You find you have to mix a lot of paint when you're painting this dark it's so much more pigment than water. All right, so fill in his whole arm, mixing up some more. And then on the toes again, just like we did over here, remove some of the paint in your jar and remove the excess water so you have a lighter value on your brush and then color in the toes, color in the toes a little lighter. Okay, we're gonna let that dry before we paint any more fur detail. And now the eyes are dry enough that we can come back in with another layer of dark paint and really paint those closed eyes super dark. If you wanna use pure black for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use pure black just for the nostrils. And those eyes, I think that looks really good. The darker the better for those little details since it is the focal point. You can darken up the shadow underneath his chin one more time. And if it's not flowing for you, just dip in the water to loosen up your paint. And then the final detail is to add those little toes on his right paw. So again, I'm taking black. painting little separations between his toes and then a bit of hair coming out, just like you see in the reference photo. And then you can also paint some, another layer of fur over the top of his leg, moving in the direction that that fur is growing. It's kind of going sideways to the right, just swooping sideways. Now's your chance to double check your painting and see if there's anything you missed. You can erase any pencil marks once it's totally dry. I'm actually going to take a little of that green that we mixed up in the background and paint it over the top of our rock with a very wet, light tinted wash, giving some color harmony to the overall composition by bringing that green more into the foreground too. And adding a little bit of gray right above his nose. There is our finished panda. I think he turned out so cute. If you guys decide to try this, I'd love for you to tag me on Instagram at E. Olson Art and I'll check it out. I love to repost your artwork in my stories. Check out these other videos about painting animals and watercolor and I'll see you there.